Hi there guys, my name's Pip and today I'm telling you what game I've been playing this month. So I've actually been playing the PlayStation exclusive game called Hidden Agenda. Now it is one of the new Playlink games as well but I'll run through what that is in a second. Um, the premise behind the game is, well it's an action adventure game but you're trying to find a killer. So with it being made by Supermassive Games they've also made things like Until Dawn. So they do, do seem to be very killer focused. <laughs> But I love that. I'm, I'm into things like that. I love things like CSI and true crime and they've definitely hooked me immediately. But in this game in particular you play as two different characters. So they do like the multi-character aspect, like I say, similar to Until Dawn where you do play as a range of characters. In this one you play as, sorry I've got the names written down because I'm awful, um, there's a homicide detective called Becky Marnie and a district attorney called Felicity Graves. So both of them are involved in this case with the trapper, um, trying to figure out who it is. Now, something different about this game than all the others, as I say, it's a PlayLink game. What that means is instead of playing with a controller, you play with either a phone, such as this. So this is an Android phone, it runs on that, or on my iPad, which obviously is an iOS device. Now, it makes no difference what you play it on, because they both run it perfectly fine, the app's exactly the same on either, so say while well, I was playing with my partner, my app had died, had to then restart and use it on my phone, exactly the same, it's not as though you have to learn how to use the app all over again. It's quite intuitive as well, so it just the game prompts you as to what you need on the tablet or the phone and, and vice versa. So the game does focus a lot of, on quick time events, so when you're searching for clues in a certain room, that seem, that's the most prominent quick time event you'll come across. So your character in the cutscene walks into a room, you need to find clues. You have so ever many so many seconds, usually about 30, to find all the evidence in the room. It can sometimes vary depending on how many bits of evidence you need and how many players you've got. So you'll rush across, you'll tap on your tablet or your iPhone or your Android and tap where you think the evidence may be. Obviously if you find all of it, perfect. If you don't, that's when the story can change a little bit. Not drastically, but obviously if you've not got all the evidence, you're not going to be able to pinpoint who you think the killer is or make as valid a case. Now, just like other supermassive games, it is that kind of butterfly effect scenario all over again. So I know I keep harping on about Until Dawn, but it is very similar to that in the sense that they are the butterfly effect moments. In this, they've got similar moments too. So in this one, they refer to them as ripple events, which obviously is very similar that everything affects something else. But I do like the fact they've changed the name of the event just to make it a little bit different. Now, on the app itself, um, you will be prompted when these ripple events occur. So, like Until Dawn, where the little butterfly appeared in the corner, in this it'll kind of prompt on your device, telling you that you've just made a choice, <laughs> basically. Um, obviously, all your choices matter. Depending on what you choose, it can determine how your character is perceived, either as Becky or Felicity, how they're perceived in general, or how the killer is perceived, depending on the evidence you use, or what you do or don't do with the, the suspect or suspects, basically. So, this is how the app looks. So it says Hidden Agenda, and obviously that's where you join the game. It usually gives you a code or something just to connect up, or it connects to your Wi-Fi, however you're playing. And it obviously depends on how many people but if you click this little book icon there, that's what you'll see throughout the game. Let's see very well. So you've got your logbook, and next to it you've got your character files. So your biographies, those are the ripple events I mentioned. And that last one is the rules of the game. So obviously at the moment you can see there's no information there just because I'm not linked up to the game currently. Um, now the game changes as well depending on how many people are playing and how you want to play. Now what I mean by that is you can choose to play together. So me and my partner played and we played together in the sense that we were trying to discover the truth and uncover the evidence as a team. Um, so we made choices together because it does work on a majority vote with a lot of the choices you go through. Um, so in that regard we had to agree on things which we have recorded live streams which were on Twitch and are also on YouTube now where you can probably see that we don't agree on things um, 
So there's an aspect called takeovers. So when these takeovers occur, you get so many dependent on questions that are asked throughout the game. So one of them is, who out of the two players is most trustworthy? Um, and obviously whoever wins, wins these kind of takeover points, or, depending on the question, so one of them was, who works best under pressure? My partner's a lot cooler under pressure than I am, so I picked him. He also picked himself because we knew that it was him, which meant that later he, traumatic moment um, that had to be dealt with, he was the only one that could make the decision and I was locked out. However, with the takeovers, um, basically you get a number of takeovers. They work kind of like trump cards. So say he, we'd make a decision, we were both split on it. I couldn't decide at all. I'd use a takeover card to mean that my vote overruled his. There is one bit in my live stream, which I will link below, where we are doing this for about two minutes because we're using all of our cards because we were adamant the other one was wrong. Um, and the fact that I thought I could try and romance someone who wouldn't let me. <laughs> but then I love games like that. That's why I've always loved the Bioware games for the romance aspect and the well, simulation aspect as well. Um, but everything can be a bit different. So I'll show you the rule list. So we've got here, we've got the choices, which I mentioned. I'll put it here so you can actually see. Then we've got the takeovers that I mentioned as well. You go up a little bit, there's reaction choices. So I'll quickly react to a certain thing. That's usually a quick time event as well, like not falling over a log or something similar. Um, you've also got searching, so that's why I mentioned the quick time events looking for evidence. Combat, because there is, they say combat, there's an aspect of combat, but it's not very often. And once again, that depends on the choices that you make. You'll, that tells you how to use your logbook, how to use end game agenda, hidden agenda and things like that and the trust aspect. So all of those are unlocked throughout the game. They will pop up and kind of prompt you to read it or go through it. Um, similar to the ripple events, what happens is like until dawn you'll get a little square there that shows what the event was. So say you shot someone as an example. It'll say you shot, I don't know, John Doe. If later on you feel remorse for that, for example, it'll then say you shot and felt remorseful about this. So they can update throughout the game, once again that can affect it, but a lot of the time, as I've seen anyway, that might just be the way I play, but a lot of them have stayed the same for me. So they've been the old one that's changed. Your biographies, once again, they'll update depending on information you gain in the game, or what you gain through conversation with other characters, for example. So if you do question them quite a lot, or if you've got quite a trusting relationship with someone, they might be more willing to give you information than someone who hasn't. Uh, and the plot, so that will update just to give you a backstory. So say, if I play today and then I don't play for a week and I've completely forgotten what I'm doing, which happens quite a lot, that will update to obviously tell me where I was last or what's happened, and it will give you a log of conversation as well, which is perfect if you do want to keep up to date with what's happened or if you've missed what a character said. Or if you want to kind of trip somebody up, like we said earlier, you can go back, almost like looking at testimony in a court case, scroll back to what they've said, and then you can say, oh, no, you didn't say that, or, or something along those lines. That's if you're playing together. Now, there is also a competitive aspect as well. So you can go into what is known as a competitive mode. So one of the, so say one, as far as I know, it's only one of you, but at some point during the game, you'll be given a secret objective. So say halfway through the game, you're getting really close to finding out who the killer is and one of you gets a secret objective to kind of blame somebody else. So you might start talking and linking that evidence to the wrong person or you could be hiding evidence or just not finding it when you're meant to in the quick time events to create conflict between other players and prevent the, like, the end game from happening and to prevent the, the case from being properly closed or closed correctly. So all of those things together, for me, have sold this game a million times over. Not to mention how cheap it is as well. I know it's a PlayLink game. The PlayLink games I've come out with really affordable prices. But you're looking at fifteen ninety nine and nine ninety nine for pre-owned versions usually. And it's amazing. It really is. I absolutely love this game. And because it can change so much, depends on who plays, how many times you play it. There's so much, like replayability in the game which I think is amazing I love being able to play games over and over and it's 
it's not the sense that you have to play it over because it's frustrating. It's more that you're playing it over because you want to get every single story and find out exactly who it is or if you did it right the first time or what happens if you hide this or what happens if you find this. And it is just a, it's so much fun. It's a great game if you just want to sit down and properly immerse yourself. But it's on the other hand, it's also a great game if you just want to have a bit of fun and a laugh with friends. I definitely recommend it, and I think you guys should definitely give it a try, especially with how cheap it is. And in all honesty, I'd pay like 30, 40 quid for this game, and I'd be 100% satisfied with it. But the fact it's cheaper is obviously a plus. But thank you guys for watching. I am going to do. I'm going to be doing more live streams of this game as well with my friends and my partner. So I will put those on Twitch straight away because I'll stream it straight from my PlayStation. But if you guys do want to catch up later, if you haven't got a chance to watch it, I will put them on YouTube and export them on that way, like I have done the first video. Um, they are quite lengthy just because it takes me and my partner a while to decide on things, uh, and we do want to try and get everything we can out of the game. But do give it a watch. Obviously, you can skip through if you want. But I'm going to be replaying it as much as I can. So do give us tips if you find anything I haven't. Or if you've got any ideas. Or if you think you've figured out who it is. So drop me a comment down below. Or watch the live streams as I say. Or join in. And I'll see you guys soon. And thank you ever so much for watching. Bye guys.